Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. Um, I'm a little somber and subdued today. Um, I wasn't even going to say this, but I, I I feel like I have to. Um, I lost my father this week. Um, going to be a week ago today. Um, he was 99 years old, passed away peacefully in his sleep. Um, had a really great life, great family. He did a great job raising us, and uh, he'll be sorely missed. So, got that out of the way. Um, what, so, what I think I was going to talk about this. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to talk about this week. Um, I'm going to talk about a little Easter egg we were presented with this week. So, let me share my screen and show you what it is I am talking about. Boom. There, you guys should be able to see that. Um, over here in the middle. There we go. So uh, we were called, we got a support ticket. Got a call that this PC here that's used to control these HVAC controllers out across the campus um, works fine. But what they want to be able to do is access it remotely, um, either from Global Protect when they're at home or from somewhere else across the plant if they can't get back to the central plant office. Now, if you're not aware, central plant uh, in our campus, and it's probably the same for, for many other installations, but the central plant is where water is uh, turned into steam where it's chilled and all of that is piped back to the main hospital to run heating and cooling for the hospital and um, it's odd that it's geez a full city block away from the hospital but uh, yeah that's the way it works so central plant where all all air conditioning is is basically adjusted and there's two of these pcs one of them they can get to the other can't and I found out one is because one PC is Johnson Controls and uh, the other PC is a different HVAC company, which I can't remember right now. So, I'm like, okay, why can't you get to it? So, my buddy Jose, who is in engineering, uh, who's got a mind like a steel trap, he remembers everything, says, hey, remember we asked you guys to disable that port on the, on the switch? So, we have one switch over at the central plant, their networking needs. And he said, yeah, we had you disable that that one port, you remember? So I looked on the switch and sure enough, here's port 227 was disabled and it was, it was alias to Johnson Controls. Okay, that must be it. So we had re-enabled that port and we still couldn't ping this PC. Now he was able to get to all these controls, these, these uh, HVAC controls but we couldn't ping internet. We couldn't ping uh, the gateway. We, I mean, its own gateway. We couldn't ping. We couldn't ping out anyway, anywhere. So we're like, what in the heck? So then we started tracing it back, and we found this little, so just a little mini hub that uh, connects to all these. And okay, that's there. That's fine. And we started to trace that back to what we thought would be this port. And no, as we traced it back, we find this guy. Oh, so there was a little ASA there that we didn't know about. All right, so I am not a Cisco guy. I don't know ASA commands. I've, I've worked on ASAs before, but only using ASDM. You know, the, the Cisco for dummies kind of thing. Um, this one didn't have ASDM installed. And even if it did, uh, I don't think I have any PCs left anymore that will even run ASDM. Because uh, all the, uh, like I couldn't even get to the web interface because the version of TLS on this is so old that none of my web browsers will support it. I mean, I tried put, putting them into crippled mode, you know, even removing the security, all every security feature I could think of. I still couldn't connect to the web on this thing. Okay, fine. We, um, we finally got to where we could uh, 
telnet into it. It's not even SSH, it's telnet. So we've telneted to it and finally got in and uh, started going through the configs. And uh, took us a couple days, but what I ended up doing is having to re remove all the ACLs and just rebuild them. And uh, I also learned something else important about ACLs is uh, you have to have this access group command. Again, I'm not a Cisco guy. I'm not an ASA guy. So uh, no matter what we did with the ACLs, it didn't seem to matter because there was only one access group command and it only applied to the inside. There was no access group applying to the outside interface. So once once I made an ACL that just basically said permit IP any any and for the in, applied to the inside interface and the outside interface and then created an access group and applied them to both interfaces then we were able to get through this guy and get out to this guy. So qualified success we can now you know honor the user's request letting him get to this via remote uh, remote desktop or dameware or whatever it is he's he's going to use however this this is still a problem so um, what i am ending up having to do is um, i'm going to have to go back into my core switches and we're going to set up vrrp on all four of those core switches now i would love to show you that but that config is just chock full of my internal IP addresses, and, I, and I'm not going to show you that. Yes, it's, it's a standard, you know, internal address scheme that probably 99% of the world uses. Fine, I'm not going to give you mine. Um, so, so suffice it to say, basically, we have four cores. So I had to set aside four IPs in the range that all these guys are in. Oh, because see, wait, before I even go into that, here's the other thing. The I, the subnet that this is in, and this is in, and this and that, all these things are in. I could not find back here on my my local area network anywhere. It wasn't it wasn't existing. I went to the VLAN, I know what VLAN this guy's in. I went back to the VLAN on my core and there's no layer three assigned to it. Oh, so I looked up the route for this guy. It points to this guy. Ah, okay, so that explains it. That's why there's no none of these layer threes are out there. So what I'm basically gonna have to do is remove the route that points to this and then set up four new layer three IP addresses for each of the core switches for this VLAN. And then I'll pick pick another IP, probably dot one, because we use dot one as gateways here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we'll pick dot one as the VRRP address. I'll set that up on all four core switches. I'll set up DHCP for that for that at layer three on all four core switches. And even though we don't use it, these don't use DHCP. Everything's statically assigned on that subnet. We'll set it up anyway. Uh, someday we might want to add DHCP to it, and that's just one less thing I have to worry about. So. So that will be the end of this little request. It's almost almost turned into a project, um, but yeah, it was a it was a request request by one user. So it, with one simple request, hey, I want remote access to this PC. We had to do some network discovery. We found an Easter egg. Um, learned how to configure said Easter egg, and next week we're going to remove this guy and plug this straight into the switch here. And all of these layer three addresses will be controlled through our core core network over here. So that's not our core, but you know, it's on that side of things. So um, yeah, fun times this week. So that'll solve that. And uh, we really wanna get rid of this ASA because you know we don't have any Cisco support contracts, so we can't update the software. I don't even know that 5505s are even supported anymore. Anymore, My guess is they're not. It's a very old unit. Um, when I first started getting into this device and, and trying to figure things out about it, I did, you know, show VER. And uh, it's ASA 7.2, which sounds old. And also the system uptime, six years, 
hundred and fifty some odd days, six years and one hundred fifty since it had been rebooted. Um, and I I have only been here six years, so this this wasn't even rebooted until before I got here. So it's time for it to go. There's there's a ton of security flaws in these things now, um, security vulnerabilities I should say. Um, so we would either have to patch it, replace it, or remove it. And we figured the safest course of action is to remove it. So there you go. Uh, yeah. So that was our, our little, uh, adventure this week. Now, um, well, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So somebody, somebody just asked me, I just saw a comment this morning. I haven't answered it yet. So I'll just answer it here on the air. Hopefully you'll, you'll see it. Um, somebody's in a computer support area over there in Sweden, and uh, he's thinking of studying to be a network admin and wondering if it's worth it. Um, what I tell people, if you are looking to break into networking or anything into the computer industry, study computer security, study network security, make that your, your focus. Um, yeah, learn learn all the ne network admin stuff. Learn IP addressing, layer three, all that good stuff. The seven layer OSI model. Learn it all. Um, but I truly think that going forward, for the foreseeable future, that's where the most money is going to be is in computer security because that's where we have the most problems. So um, that's my advice for what it's worth. So. There you go. So uh, any anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell if you want to know when more of this silliness comes out. And uh, thank you all who are supporting the channel um, with your kind comments and your prayers. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, no matter who you are, just remember you are not alone. There are a lot, lot of Christians out here um, all just quietly working and doing our thing, but you are not alone. So thanks all for watching. We'll see you all next week. God bless. And where is the thing? There's the thing.